Thank you. And um, for those of you that are standing on that side, uh, there are plenty of seats on this side if you want to move. So we've balanced a little bit the room. Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce the, the last speaker this morning for session three, uh, Dr. Naomi Harada. Um, uh, Dr. Harada is Deputy Director of the Research and Development Center for Global Change in the Japan Agency for Marine Earth System and Technology. At the center, Dr. Harada leads the Marine Ecosystem Dynamics Research Group and Arctic Marine Ecosystem Research Unit of the Institute of Arctic Climate and Environmental Research. Dr. Harada's work focuses on how marine organisms in polar and subarctic regions respond to ocean acidification. Dr. Harada will be presenting on sentinel studies of ocean acidification in pelagic systems of the Western North Pacific, Arctic Ocean, and Japanese coast. Dr. Harada. Um, good morning, everybody. So um, thank you very much for all symposium organizers giving me this opportunity. Today's, um, my title is Sentinel Studies of um, Ocean Acidification in the Arctic Ocean and Japanese Coast. And uh, I would like to introduce and um, how Japanese scientists tackled with the ocean acidification issues. Okay. So what is ocean acidification? When the atmospheric carbon dioxide dissolved in the surface waters react with an H2O immediately and change in bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ions. As a result, hydrogen ion concentration increase in the sea surface and then water mass acidifies. So that is ocean acidification. So why we target um, the um, Arctic region and Japanese coasts? So this figure shows the prediction of alagonite saturation in near future, 2,100. The red color means the undersaturation area for alagonite. As you can see, the higher latitude includes the polar regions and Japanese coasts will face to quite serious ocean acidification in near future. So therefore, um, we have monitoring sites two monitoring sites in the Western Arctic Ocean for ocean acidification and also to understand how organisms are responses to the ocean acidification using the sediment trap marine system since 2010. In Japanese coast, 10 monitoring sites are uh, operated covering worldwide of uh, Japanese coasts Today, I'd like to show the two, uh, the results of, from the two locations of the Japanese coast. So I will show you changes in pH from um, one location of the Arctic Ocean and two locations from the Japanese coast. And also, I'd like to present the response of um, typical organisms to ocean acidification. Pteropods, which is the quite popular marine culture fires on, in the ocean, and abalone and shilago, which are on popular seafood in Japan and East Asian countries. So this is the results of the seasonal change in subsurface pH monitored at station HNC located in the Han Canyon in the Western Arctic Ocean. 
So as you can see, there is a gap between uh, two years. So this is a data set from the October 2015 to September 2017. Unfortunately, the mooring depths of pH sensor are different in both years and also subsurface water mass is covered by remnant and newly ventilated Pacific winter waters having relatively low but different pH values are intricately laminated between, sub -sub between 15 to 150 meter water depths. So that's why um, there is a gap appeared. But we can see the common trends are um, observed. The first trend is the relatively low um, pH values were observed often in the beginning of sea ice season, for example, October and November. Uh, and also the relatively higher pH were observed summer season. And the common trend, the second common trend is quite low pH values, a minimum pH values with dynamic range, 0.5 pH units are often observed in the beginning of Poland, uh, sea ice season, October, November, and summer season in both years. So why we are focusing on the subsurface pH? That depth is much more abundant depth of uh, marine culture fires, pteropod. So to understand the response of marine culture fires such as pteropod, um, to um, how response of such marine culture fires to um, ocean acidification, we have developed a micro X-ray, micro focus X-ray computing tomography method. So the X-ray emitted from X-ray tube and permeate the target samples and then detected X-ray attenuation coefficient. So we can get the two dimension of X-ray attenuation data, and then we can compile the, this uh, two dimension data set to create a 3D um, data set, X-ray attenuation data set of individuals. And also, um, we can calculate the covering density from shell volume estimated by a CT number using a micro X-ray computer tomography, and also um, calcium covalent content measured by ICP mass spectrometry. And we compare the shell density and mean CT number to uh, get an empirical equations. So this graph shows the empirical equation of planktic flaminifera, we can see very good linear relationship between shell density and the mean CD numbers. So we get the every, um, we get this empirical equations for um, different species. So we usually uh, get the, this empirical equation to estimate the shell volume. So this is an example of the cross-section image of pteropod, Limashina herishina, living in uh, Western Arctic Ocean. So we usually measure the covalent density as a spatial resolution 0.5 micrometer, so which corresponds to the value of the synchrotron. So this is a result of the seasonal change in shell density of Arctic Limashina Hiroshima. So from uh, using from the sediment trap marine system. 
So we usually um, measure 10 individuals to get an average of the carbonate density from one sediment drop samples. So um, as you can see, there is a clear seasonality in the um, carbonate shell density of Limashina Hiroshima, and maximum 40% decrease were observed in the sea ice in the beginning of sea ice season and summer season. So um, this decline of um, carbonate shell density can be um, correspond to the timing quite low pH value were observed in 2016 and in 2017 shown in previous slide. So um, maybe the subsurface pH of the water mass often be um, under the threshold value of pH for um, terapod in these regions. Okay, I will move to the changes in pH monitored at Japanese coasts. The upper panel shows the change in pH monitored at Onjuku Station, Pacific side, since 1982. The lower panel shows the change in pH monitored at 1997 and Kashiwazaki Station, the Japan Sea coast. So we can see gradual uh, reduction of pH at both locations. The annual reduction rate of pH was um, minus 0 0.007 at Onjuku Station, Pacific side and minus 0.011 at Kashiwazaki stations. So both um, values are higher, quite higher, twice or three times higher as compared to that observed in pelagic oceans in the world. Such large annual pH reduction rate at the Japanese coast would bring large impact on coastal organisms. Sorry, oh, oops. Sorry. So um, in order to understand the response of coastal organisms to the acidification, rearing experiments using larvae of Ezoabaron were done under the dianal PCO2 um, cycles variations. And uh, rearing experiments also done very stable PCO2 conditions. So what does the response of Avalon control? Onitsuka et al. finally found that there is a threshold value for laval as abalone. So this figure shows the malformation rate that increased around 1.1 of saturation degree aragonite, which corresponds to 1,100 microatom of PCO2. Maybe that value would be threshold for Ezoabalon, Lavi Ezoabalon. They also found that the impacts of ocean acidification on growth of laval abalone can be determined by intensity and time of exposure to PCO2 over the threshold, called as integral PCO2 over 1,100 microatom. 
the integral PCO2 over 1100 microatom can be explained as following equations. And larval shell length decreased with the increasing of integral PCO2 over 1100 microatom. It seems likely that if the daily maximum PCO2 value reaches to the threshold, ba threshold values for larvae as avalon, so larvae as avalon would be immediately affected by acidification. The next target and coastal organism is Shilago japonica. So this is quite popular fish in the East Asians. This um, map is habitat map of um, common ki uh, kinds of this species. And this species distributes the surface from zero to 30 meters. And uh, this species, the Shilago japonica, are very popular for tempura or sometimes sushi. So this photograph shows the early life development of Shilago japonica. So this species reproduce mainly in summer season from June to October. And uh, this species um, become adult within about two years, and lifetime is four years. So to understand how Shilago japonica responds to ocean acidification, rearing experiments of um, larval Shilago japonica were done under different PCO2 condition, pH conditions, using fish rearing tank. And the typical, some kinds of phytoplanktons and some kinds of zooplanktons are added in tanks as a food for zooplankton and uh, fish food, respectively. The rearing experiments were done with the pH control and without pH control. The tank one and tank two are without pH control during experiments. In contrast, tank three and tank four were controlled pH very slightly using water passed through the pH modifying tank by aeration to make PCO2 seawater is equal to PCO2 air. So this is a result of um, pH changes during rearing experiments and the survival rate of level S Shilago, uh, Shilago Japonica, counted at eight days later. So when we see here the green color and the blue color tank were controlled slightly pH, so these tanks the pH value were kept upper 8.14 throughout the experiments. And the survival rate were quite high, more than 70%. But if we see the yellow and red tank without pH controlled, the pH reduced gradually 
throughout the experiment period. And survival rate of larval Shilago japonica were less than 50%. So these results suggest threshold is also important for juveniles survival of Shilago japonica. Okay, I sum up today's my talk. Subsurface pH in the Western Arctic Ocean observed from October 2015 to September 2017 showed large seasonality with dynamic range of 0.5 pH unit. The pH largely dropped in summer in the beginning of sea ice seasons. Teropod shell density decreased maximum 40%, responding to the reduction of aragonite saturation degree. During summer in the beginning of sea ice seasons in the Western Arctic Ocean. At Japanese coastal stations, the annual pH reduction rate was minus 0.007 and minus 0.011 at the Pacific and Japan sea size, respectively. These values are twice or three times larger than those of monitoring sites in pelagic ocean in the world. Popular commercial organisms as Abalone and Shilago japonica responded to ocean acidification. Rearing experiments showed that their juvenile received immediately negative impact when the pH drops under the threshold. Adaptation strategies for marine organisms, such as seed production of commercially important fish, are required to overcome progress in future ocean acidification. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Soto Harada, for a fascinating set of experiments and uh, observations. I'm sure there will be some questions from the audience, and as previously, if you have a question, please head yourself towards the, the microphone and, um, and put your questions to Dr. Harada. And while someone does that, I'll put the first question, Maso, do you have one? Yes. Yes. Hi. Yeah, this is very interesting work. I was just wondering if you see maybe micro CT technique complemented with some other techniques, such as scanning electron microscope being used maybe as a methodology where we could start scanning the shells of theropods worldwide to start seeing maybe in theropods how they are responding to OA on a longer, longer time scales and have some sort of comparison across different regions and see where the potential OA hotspots for these creatures that we know that are ubiquitous around um, all oceans. Yeah, so, so what's the comment on the methodology mm -hmm. to be used worldwide and maybe in comparison with other methods? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your comments and questions. So yeah, this technique can be useful for um, not only teropod, but also other um, planktic marine calcifiers. So this um, size of organism is uh, most abundant calcifiers on the world. So that's why we, uh, we have developed focusing on this size of um, organisms to quantify the response of um, ocean acidifications. So maybe this, this technique can be quite useful to um, evaluate um, the, yeah, the response for um, acidifications in the worldwide. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Other questions, Dr. Harada? Okay, well, if that is the case, um, just thank you very much again thank for you. your presentation. Thank you.